Welcome everyone to the King of the Palace, presented by New Palace Lanes in Fitchburg, Massachusetts, sponsored by North End Mazda Subaru and Rebel Smoke. Last week, newcomer Al Greco defeated Jason Gauthier Jr. This week, he faces the number two seed and another newcomer in Justin Lion Age. Should be a good match between two new bowlers. King of the Palace is brought to you by North End Mazda Subaru in Ludenburg, Massachusetts, and Rebel Smoke in Fitchburg and Lumster, Mass. I'm Dennis Nuzzo, standing here with this week's bowlers. Last week, to my left, Al Greco, you defeated uh, Jason Gauthier Jr., who defeated Anthony Karen. Welcome back. Thank you, and it's a pleasure to be here also again. Welcome to have you back. And to my right, with a roll-off score of 402, which did tie Al, but he had a higher single at 155, is Justin Leonese, making his first appearance on the King of the Palace. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, any thoughts going into your match against Al? I'm just a little stiff, but I just got to have a couple warm-ups, and I'm good to go. Awesome. And Al, your thoughts about bowling against Justin? Uh, he bowled next to me uh, during the tournament. He's a very good bowler, and I have a big challenge against me. All right. And what are your thoughts on the uh, new title belt? Uh, I've never really seen the old title belt, so I don't have it. It looks good. Well, we didn't have one before. We just introduced it for the first time. No oh. one's ever done it before, so we tried it out. Well, I'm trying hard to get it. There you go. Everybody wants a piece of the title belt. We'll go out to your bolt, and I'll see one of you in the 11th box. All right. Up first on Alley 3, Al Greco who last week defeated newcomer Jason Gauthier Jr. Okay, Al Greco, well, lane number three. Got that crazy curve ball. Wide left, leaves what? The Caleri. For a spare, let's see what happens. Bounce. Oh. Wow, hit the deadwood. Hit the deadwood, didn't want that, Al. Al's highest average is a 94. Comes out of Lucky Strike Lanes in Lynn, Massachusetts. He's been bowling for 10 years. His high single is a 152. His high triple is a 363. His favorite shot is the single 7 pin, and his least favorite shot is the single 10 pin. Probably because of that curve ball. Probably, yeah. He has to almost throw that ball into the gutter, and hopefully it uh, doesn't I, curve. I was thinking after last week's match. That was a nice ball. A nice head pin shot. Oh. Leaves the... Five, seven, ten. He's got a spare at the lily. It's going to be a kind of a tough shot, tough leave. Didn't you make the lily on a Friday night? I did. Very difficult. With no wood even. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. With no wood? No wood. Yeah. Dennis can attest to it. Yep. No wood. So the, the five pin went into the seven or it went into the ten? It, uh, it was, I hit the right hand side of the five pin. Five took the the seven, the ball took the ten. Wow. Excellent shot, David. You said Al's getting nine? Yes. The Lily is a very, very difficult shot. Yeah, you know what's funny is is I have a hard time hitting easy spares, but tough ones I can tough. seem to make. <laughs> hence, Story of my hence, life. The, hence the um, uh, uh, half Worcester shot. Up now, another newcomer, Jason yeah, Justin Lyman's. What? Lyonnaise. Lyonnaise, excuse me. Um, his highest average is a 106. His home lanes are a Leo Super Bowl. Amesbury. Yep. And he oh, also bowls at Pilgrim Lanes. Who's Pilgrim? Haverhill. Haverhill. It's Haverhill. And he's been bowling for 15 years. His high single is a 189, and his high triple is a 400. Well, he cranks it up and he whips it. He's well, I'm looking at the scoreboard over there. Uh, scorekeeper Corrado had it as an eight, so I'm assuming. He's left a 1-3-6 here for a 10 box. Oh, Al left 7. So after 2, Al is at 21 and Justin is at 15. Well, we got a minute here. Once again, a shout out to our excellent sponsors, Martin Bambino up there at North End Mazda Subaru. And the Sheldon family. And Rebel Lemon Smoke. Rebel Smoke in Fitchburg and Lemonster. Visit, uh... BuyNorthEnd.com or RebelSmoker.com. Weak first ball here by Hal, only taking out the seven. Have to straighten up that curve ball. I want to thank all the viewers out there on YouTube and on local access TV in your city or town. We can't do this without you. We appreciate your support, and without you, we could not do what we do. So please continue watching. Please continue commenting. Um, when you do watch the show on YouTube, share it on your Facebook page. Let your other friends see what you're watching. Absolutely correct. The more exposure, the better. And yep. if you want it in your city or town, just contact your local public access provider. Just sign one piece of paper. It doesn't cost you anything. And have them contact us, and we'll get you the show. And if 
Oh, I lost my train of thought. Wow, that was a first. Oh, come on now. <laughs> first for this minute, maybe. <laughs> hey, I usually screw up five times before breakfast, so. That's on a good day. Yeah. Leaves Diamond, my favorite, leave. You know, it's kind of funny. His least favorite shot was the 10 pin, and the first pin he knocked out was the 10 pin. <laughs> it's easier when they're all up. Oh. You know what? He had, he had the, the diamond up, right? He hits his object. A little full. Now, how can the ball... Oh, I'm not you just watched it. He back. takes <laughs> two pins. Do you realize how perfectly straight that ball had to be thrown down? Yeah. Right? I it's mean, weird because when you throw a curveball like that and you yeah. plan for it and it doesn't happen, it throws you all off. Whoa, 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 whoa. Almost for Justin. He's left a head pin. The finger of God for spear. All there over. Is. He faced it. He got he the spear. He throws the ball hard. First mark of the match. Now, once again, uh, speaking of uh, speed, if he throws the ball from the foul line to the head pin, makes contact. And nice ball. Wow, nine one pin drop. One second. He took stone at 41 miles an hour. He oh, another one second man? Yep. <laughs> one bump jump. And two in a row. Two in a row. Now bro. we're off. Two now in a row good. for the newcomer. Well, we got two newcomers. Al's never been on the show, has he? I think he's been in the roll box, but I don't think he's ever made the show. Last week was his first time. Yeah. After four, Al is at 35, and Justin is at 44 working on a spin. Well, well, needless to say, Al needs some marks here. Nice first ball delivery. Left one of the six triangles. Also three, known as the Mongo. The three, five. This is very, very difficult. Another shot. Maybe made three out of ten times, I'd say. Maybe four. Very, very difficult. Bowler's preference to what? Oh, Bowler's preference to what side of the three pin? In contact with to get the spare. And he wow, picks it up. Oh, nice ten. Okay, after five, 45 for Al. He's on to alley four, box number six. First ball delivery, gonna be wide right. Al, when he's not throwing curveballs down the alley, plays drums, cards with his friends, and he also marches in the drum corps. He's got the one, five, seven, eight with some wood. Very, very difficult spare shot. Oh. And when you're good. watching it on YouTube and you go to leave a comment, Tell us where you're from. Yeah, yeah. we'd love to know, you know get how far we reach. Where did we get it last week? Nova Scotia? New yes. Brunswick? Yep. Michigan? Turn around and um, uh, you want to do, do a shout out? Say, hey, I want to say hi to my mom, my dad, my grandparents, my kids. We'll put it on there. Exactly. You know, your we'll ex-wife. <laughs> I don't see that happening, but you know, if, you, <laughs> if that's what you want, we'll do it. <laughs> I don't know, Travis will have to think that one over. Okay, here comes Justin up on a spare. He's got some chance here to really put some... Oh, boy, does he load up. Right, still going. And he's left, another one. There he goes. Up, he's left the seven pin again for a spare. Blue moon. Oh, please. No good. No good. No good. Yeah. Ball he went he into just the, keeps on going, man. He just... Yeah. Ball went into the gutter people. Up there's there no rest. And hit... Gets up there and fires the fires it. Yeah, I mean that can hurt you sometimes, but if you, that's well, what you bowl. He looks like a young kid. He's been bowling for uh, 15 years, so it could throw you off. Like it looks like that ball just got away from him. So sometimes you just gotta take a second. Yeah, he does throw that ball hard. After six, we have Al at 55 and Justin at 71. 16 pin deficit here facing Al Greco up on the lane number three, box number seven, string number one. Got to get some marks, hasn't marked yet. Let's see what happens. Three-step approach, drops it, has got that curve. Oh, really in left. the bio sheet, we asked Al uh, anything he'd like to mention on the show. He says that it's a good tournament in great lanes. Oh, nice oh, ball, there it is. This is first mark. Delivered the spare. Okay, going up on the alley four. Needs another mark. Hopefully closes the gap. We'll see what happens. Talk about making chicken salad out of chicken bleak. Nice job, Dennis. Leaves the MK to the left. 
I'm good sometimes. Those <laughs> are with a three, but yeah, definitely wants to make the spare and cut that lead down. You picked this up quite a few times on on our leagues. I have. I think this would stop being my favorite. Oh, look at this. Oh. Oh, gave it a wiggle. So what are you trying to say is you like the MKs? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I guess that's one way to put it. <laughs> uh, he's loved the one pin here for 10 bucks. And he if you've never guy. ever seen Steve Bull, whenever he throws a spread eagle, he does <laughs> the craziest dance you've ever seen in your no. life. A yellow whiz the owner. <laughs> arms up, yeah, your arms are up in the air, your feet uh, are kicking. Well, next time whip out your phone and we'll put it on YouTube. Okay, I'll do that. It is what I doubt the most discouraging, annoying, and frustrating thing to happen, in my opinion, to a candle pin. Oh, oh, nice, nice shot. 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 Nice shot, Justin. Nice shot. He had a terrible weave there, but he didn't let it phase him. Okay. Three out of five boxes he's marked. Yeah, he can really pile it on Al right now. It's another good fill. Oh, found it. Red Speaking pin. of it, look at this, people. Fills it with three. He not only gets the spread eagle, he gets the spread eagle with what, Dennis? With a friend. Extra, extra talent. A friend. <laughs> oh, look at this, though. What a bid. Ooh, almost. Nice shot. Shows a beautiful ball on the spare and takes out the eagle plus a friend. Unbelievable. And an eight box. So <sighs> after eight, we have Al at 78 and Justin at 93. Not 92, sorry. Four, 14 pin lead with two boxes to go. But Let's see if Al can get on that head stick and start putting some marks on the board again. Way, way off. On Picked up one. his favorite pin, seven pin. As he says, wow, as he walks by. I was talking to him before the match, before the interviews, and he said that um, when he plays the drums sometimes too much, it messes with his curve. He, says, he said it affects the tendons in his arm, so sometimes his curve oh. gets away from him. Dennis, yeah. um, get another version here, two or three. Is this a Greek church leaf? Again, I'm not sure. That's a 10-pin term, so I'm not sure oh. what exactly it is. I don't remember. Because I remember you were the one who told me about well, it. I'm pretty sure the viewers yeah. will uh, Yeah, I'm sure they'll comment, they'll comment sure. on we'll it. Correct on yeah, it. never heard of it until you brought it up. I'm yeah. not the one who actually brought it up. Uh, I've uh, always liked the, the devil's bed posts. The 4-6? Well, you guys know me. Post. Those yeah. the I think I've six. gotten that too before. What? The 4-6. I saw Mike Morgan pick it up against my team on the Friday Night Pro League once. He played it off the wall, the 4 off the wall, right into the 6. Well, That's you know nice you know me, guys. I'm, you know, I'm always, you know, people put on the radio, they listen to rock and roll or support me. No radio on the Mass Pike. I'm thinking, concentrating, and concentrating, focusing, thinking about Candlepin Bowling. You got to get a life, man. <laughs> I just got to say, I just got to say that. Well, yeah, I'm There's so much good stuff out there. Sports well, radio, this maybe, and that. Well, you know, I'd we, rather we know, focus. We know a guy thinking. who likes uh, bubblegum, bubblegum dance in Kochi. <laughs> Disco you know, duck. Disco duck. You know. Well, I focus thinking and concentrating on getting up and bowling. And don't get me show. wrong. I think about the show, you know, while I'm delivering my route. Trying to make you know think no, of new okay. ways, but yep, yep. Shape. Shape. I do listen to the radio when I'm in the car. Well, I mean, what could you do <laughs> for you doing your mail route? You could have earphones on. Could the post no. office allow you to do no. that? No, you're not oh. supposed to have earphones on. Look oh. at this. Yeah, he's a government worker. Come on now. Well, he's left the eight. The well, nine. it's a safety thing. They don't want if a dog comes at you, you're not going to hear him if you got a pair of headphones on. Ooh. No, dogs don't go after mail carriers. No, that's no, like, never. That's just a fable. Yeah. No, no, that's just completely untrue. It's okay. Justin wants to <laughs> mention that uh, he works at the Grog Restaurant and he enjoys skiing at Bretton at, Woods. Yeah. I've never skied in my life. Me either. I have no desire to. Oh, no, nope. I, I did once up, up in the show, I think it was. And after the third lesson, I landed up head first into the tree. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, look at this guy. Some oh. favorable action yeah, off man. a poor hit. He's left, what, just the eight pin for a spare? The eight pin, but he's got some wood. He's got to play it just right in. Oh, uh, oh, right around it. Right around it. So a he's going to have a decent lead going into the second string over Al. Could have had a lot more. Got a nine. So after one, we have Al at 95 and Justin at 111. So three spares. 16 pin lead going into the second yeah, string. Yeah, the Max, the spares did it for Justin. Three spares with uh, 18, 21 on the fills to just one spear for Al. Yeah, the Max tell the difference in this game, that's for sure. Do we have uh, a question of the week? We do. Would you like to pick one? You want me to pick one? Yeah, why not? All right, let's I'll, see. I'll let you do something. <laughs> uh, all right, this one comes from Jim Crane. Where's he out of? 
he doesn't say, he says, oh. Jim Crane, he says, I enjoy your show. Here's my question. Can a senior citizen learn cantaloupin bowling? And the answer is yes. That's right. A senior citizen can learn how to cantaloupin bowl. We have bowlers in all leagues from the ages of uh, kids' leagues from five to all the way up to 85. Yep. Um, so, yes, it is not too late to learn cantaloupin bowling. It doesn't matter, like I said, we said before on the show, it doesn't matter how hard you throw the ball or how slow you throw the ball. How tall you are, how short you are. You know, it's doesn't just, matter. You know, just throw, the, right throw handed. the ball. As Steve would say, you throw the ball 60 feet down the alley. It's all however about you, having fun. Yep, however you get it done. And you know what's kind of funny is, is you know, I, I being being privileged to own a Canlipin house oh, nice and, shot. and seeing uh, oh, a lot see of... everything. Right? And seeing yeah. a lot of different leagues, it's like the older gentlemen can throw that curveball. Mm -hmm. And they can throw it very accurate, yep. as you can see Al. Yep because he's retired, so not picking on Alan any stretch of the means of being old. Um, but still, it's just something the way they throw the ball. Wow, it is. I think sometimes throwing that ball hard like Justin's doing is like a lot of punch out. Well, yeah, you gotta find that fine line between power and accuracy. Yep. You gotta know when to take it off, when to put it on. And yeah, but then, 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 but there are some people who never, tra never change. That's they throw true. the same ball yep. at that same speed every time. Because they, well, you, you know, know why? Because they can't. They know. Yeah, we know a few people like that. I've tried to coach them. Um, you can't, some people throw the ball so hard that if you try to tell them to slow down, they, lo hard. they lose their accuracy. Yeah. Yeah. But the other problem is their their shoulder is going to be gone within ten years. Well, that's what we brought up in the last month's show. I asked you about that. If you remember about if by repetition. Can you possibly hurt yourself? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Please. Yeah. Talk about hamstrings, quads, yep. Achilles, feet, how I hurt my foot. You know, it's funny. No. If I stretch out before a match, I wind up hurting myself as opposed to when I don't stretch out. Oh, I got to stretch out. Are you kidding me? This, yeah, these I, old bones. I, like, if I stretch out, I notice that my hamstrings start Oh, hurting. look at this. Oh, you almost got a break. Yeah, and if I don't stretch out, man, I'm junk by the second string. See, everyone's different. You get your own niches, you know? Yeah, I got my own issues. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, I think we need more than half an hour for those. But I'm glad. Oh, I'm glad an hour. <laughs> I, need, I need a psychiatrist couch. <laughs> and no, wait a minute, though. You just put me down because I, I, I focus, concentrate, and think on, about cantaloupe and bowling. Well, maybe we can get a two-for-one special. We can, we can, that, actually, that, that, we can have Travis videotape it. Yeah, or maybe a three-for-one because Dennis is still not over the belt. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, that's, that's In due time. In due time. In due time. But I'm, I'm not... I'm just mad at myself, pretty much, because I oh, had yeah. it with them, with them <coughs> Now he finds the head pin, and look at this mess. Of course, you know, the fourth. And, 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 and Dennis coming up short is, is advocating for rule changes. <laughs> I kind of figured that's where that was coming from. For rule the, changes for, for, on for next year. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, no, that's something actually someone brought up to me, what we were talking about. Also, want to mention that we're almost wrapping up the uh, Twin City Challenge between uh, Mason's Bowling Alley in Lemonster, Mass, in New Palace Lanes, you still have time to um, come down and qualify and either make the A or B division. A's this year will be held at Mason's. B's will be held here at New Palace Lanes. This is the second annual. We had a great turnout last year. We're looking for you to help us create another standing tradition as the King of the Palace and as the Twin City Challenge. Also, the next King of the Palace will be on March 28th at 4 p.m. And in May... For the first time ever for all the people that were afraid to do the 80% handicap because they thought they weren't going to be able to do well because they have high averages or they're the pro bowlers or the best of the best. I'm putting out a challenge. We're doing a scratch tournament. Absolutely. Yep. And it's designed just for you. People wanted it. We're delivering it. Here it is. Come on down. So I'm probably going to get heckled for saying put up or shut up. But That's the truth. Put up or shut up. That's right. You wouldn't come down season one, season two, because you said that you didn't know if the show was going to last. Season three, we're going strong. We got sponsors. We're growing. And now you're saying that it's either too far to travel or it's 80% handicap. So I'm not making it 80% handicap. So let's see you guys down here. And here's another thing. And yeah. I'd be, and it's, I would love to see everybody, all the great bowlers come down for one big giant scratch tournament so they can show everybody else on YouTube and Facebook and and on local access TV their talents and their skills and show them the best of the best. That's right. And here's, here's another challenge that I'm throwing. I'm throwing a gauntlet down myself right now. If you 
Uh, near a uh, bowling center alley. I'm, I'm always, I always say bowling alley because that's what I grew up calling it. Talk to the owner. See if they want to host King of the Palace. We, we'd love to take this on the road. If, if you know anybody that is even interested remotely, have them contact us and uh, about putting the show on out of their home alley, and we will definitely take it on the road to them. Shooting for 10 box, and he makes nice shot. Nice 10, nice pickup. I've already talked to a couple people, but they don't want to do it because they already do like low bowling and stuff like that. And who knows? That's the people that have given up on the canopin bowlers and just uh, just turn around and and focus on the generation of profit, so to yeah. speak. You know what I mean? I've never turned down any kind of business whatsoever. I don't I don't know too many businesses that do. Um, but it seems that the problem with candle pin bowling is they're catering more to the entertainment aspect than the sport. Right. You know, there's no, there's, you know, I know a couple of houses that there's no frills and no um, uh, uh, sunshines and rainbows. You know, I'm one place that doesn't have all, all the video games and all the glow bowling and stuff like that, you know. And, People, people here like to just bowl. They don't Go want all the other man. stuff. Right. You know? Okay, Justin up an alley. Found the head pin, slams the head pin, leaves just the four. Nice favorable wood. Should sweep this right out. Should get the mark. Let's keep it on the alley like that. Let's get pick up. Spare. Nice shot. So he gets the mark in the fifth box, goes on to alley number four. Boy, he just gets up and throws the ball. Just missed the head pin, leaving the four horsemen on the right for spare. The one, three, six, ten. I would love to take this on the sh the, ro the show on the road. Yeah, Boston, Bill Rucker. Oh, oh nice. nice. Yeah. That's the four. He picked up the spare that time, picked up the four horsemen, split the one and the three. It carried, fortunately, carried the corner pin, the ten, got the spare. And when you throw your questions of the week out, let us know where you're from. That'd be uh, spectacular, so I can say, you know, like the question we had from Jim Crane, let us know where you're from, Jim. I'd like to know how far we reach. We already know we reach Canada. Yep. All over the U.S. Yep. Share us. El Greco faces. Nice Two ball. Marks have found it. Come on. Fall down. Now, why didn't the nine pin fall down for the bowl? Well, he's still got a pretty good shot at the spare here. Which would you play in? I'm <laughs> huh? Right there. Well, he's playing oh, that one at work, so we'll yeah. go with that one. We'll go with that yeah, one. I you think you want to be there. a little bit more off to the right, right. where I would have thrown it, but hey, whatever works. It all, it's all the same on paper. That's right. Well, facing the six, Phil with another mark against Justin. Let's see what happens. Cranked it up, found the head pin, drops six with some favorable wood. He's left the three. Looks like the three, five, seven, eight, David? Yes. Yep, okay. with a piece of wood in between the three and the five. I'm drilling the head pin to the, I'm, excuse me, the three pin, and I'm going to shade it to the right. Yep, that's what I would play it. Wow, yeah. nice pickup. Yeah, he got a two in a row. He's matched a double spear by Justin. We're coming down. It's going to be interesting, people. At, at the six, Al is at 72 working on a spear, and Justin's at 63 working on a spear. It's going to be interesting. Let's see Al's knocked the lead down to seven pins. Seven, uh, Justin has a seven pin lead right now, box to box. Found the head pin, leaves the, oh, he's left just the 10 pin for a spare. Filled the spear with a nine. This is a very, very important spear shot. Justin's uh, favorite shot is the 10 pin. And he, and he picked it, it up. Yep. Yes, and he's got three in a row. Dennis, David, and Candlepin Bowling, three in a row known as? Turkey. Let's see if he gets the fourth mark. Turkey, badge, eagle. Eagle. Four in a row is an eagle. He's got a shot at it. Got the one and the two. Eight pin drop. He's piling up the marks. He's there. Yeah, he's and he's got. Four in a row. What's he got? He's got an eagle. Four yeah. marks in a row and candle pin bowling and any combinations of spears or strikes is called an eagle. He's not messing around anymore. No, right, he's turning on and put on the pressure. Al's got a big ditch to climb out of right now. He needs to match him at least. Wants to fill the smock. Oh, Ooh, wow. Half Worcester left. Want, you didn't want that. Unfortunate. So th so when I'm healthy enough to do this challenge, yeah. is, is it like half Worcester left or half Worcester right? It doesn't right, matter. Or? You, I'll put it down any ones you want. You want four on the left side, four on the right. I don't care. 
You made the statement here on TV during a taping of the show. And the last I, David Metalla, owner of the New Palace Lanes, <laughs> can make eight out of ten half horses with no wood. And then I, Steve Bronchuk, turn around and say, okay, what? I'm going to get you pizza and then stiff me on the bill. Come on, I just didn't have my... I thought I had more money in my Was that from, like, season one? Yep. Yep. <laughs> Second month. But I did the challenge. No, actually, it was season two, because I was here. That's that. right, it was. It was season two. But what we failed to remember, too, Dennis, he made it in the last... Well, I mean, he did make it, but it took him to the last... To the last... The last Doesn't show. matter. Doesn't matter. That's right. No, I've never said anything about... Ooh. Oh, do you want that? Do well, box to box, he's down 23, and he's up against a spear. That was the triangle, right? The triangle challenge? Yeah, you yeah, had to make seven out of ten. No, six out of ten, and you made it. I, I, I was the first one to compliment you on it. And then so, stiff me on the bill. So after eight, Al is at 91. Justin's at 100, working on a spear. I'll take any type of odds that eight out of ten are not made on the <laughs> on the half. Any type of odds. Two That's boxes completed. 25 pin lead for Justin. Plus a ball, Dennis. Plus a ball. Yeah, and he can just about salt it away here. How many, oh. how many shots do I get at it? Well, just one. Why don't you do I one set balls, of ten right? left, one set no, of ten no, right? No, no, no. We said one shot. <clears throat> uh, I would probably try to get the two pins out of this. Put a little more yeah. pressure on Al. Looks like that's what he was pins. going for. Throws a mark here. It'll probably be out of reach for Al. Last box for Justin, lane number four, a little wide right, he's left the one, the two, the four, the seven, a shot at the four horsemen for a spare, Ooh, oh, almost wow. a domino, left the, left the seven. The seven pin all by itself, known as the corner of the building shot, or the ten pin. And he's missed, and he finishes with what, Dennis? Uh, 118, two-string uh, total of 229. Yeah. Al's got a little bit of work to do. Yeah. But it may be uh, a little bit too late. Which he's down 26 and facing he's 17. He's down 26 and against 17, so he needs 44 pins. To win. So he needs a double strike. He can't win yep. with two spins. He needs a double strike. Somewhere he needs, like we said, a double strike in there. And he hasn't thrown one yet today. Nobody has. Nobody has. Nope. nope. The hammers just didn't and come today. Anything is possible. Nope. Not with that ball, no. unfortunately. No. No. He's not dead yet, though. He could still, no. Well, yeah, if he get gets spare here. He, yeah. needs just, he needs the spare or he's done. And that'll do it. Justin's moving on. So, it'll be Justin Lineage against uh, the, the number, number one seed, seed next week. And then next week, we will be crowning a new king, king of the palace. And with what? The new world title belt. Absolutely, 100%. Truthful. Sparkling. Kills you, doesn't it? Glistening. I'm getting over it. Putting Little. it around the waist nice and tightly. Dennis fit. is Dennis is so getting over it that he told me that he told me he told me the following week that he was almost done doing the show because he was so disappointed himself for losing. Well, yeah. It happens, you know. No, no, he wanted he wanted to stop doing the show altogether. Yeah. Yeah. That's how upset he was. Huh, Dennis? Uh, I, I was nah. talking out. Yeah. <laughs> you know. You know, people, right. and no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. People me, think that I overreact on the on, on, on the spread eagle, and you want to quit the show? You want to leave me, my buddy David? I couldn't do that. He'd kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. That was the best one all day. All right, it put Al Greco looking at the uh, a two pin here for a ten blocks. No, what did he finish with? One oh eight. Finishes with a one oh eight for a two string total of a two oh three against Justin's 229. And we have the winner is Justin Lannis. We'll be going up against John Dufield next week for the championship for the King of the Palace Belt. Al, Al had three spares and Justin had seven. No strikes thrown. Congratulations to both. Justin moves on and now it's time to get to the 11th box with Dennis Nuzzle. Welcome to the 11th box. I'm Dennis Nuzzo, standing here with this week's winner, Justin Lyonese. Congratulations, Justin, on a great match. Thank you. It was a hard match, but at least I won. You had him by 16 pins going into the uh, second string, and then you just kept get out of his reach, and you held on for an additional 10 pins. I know, but there was that one box. It was a spare with a one fill on it. I wasn't happy with that. 
I've been there. A championship match, I had uh, one eighth hill on us, baby. <laughs> so I know you're coming from on that. And you're one step closer to the title belt. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I, re I want it, but it's going to be a hard uh, opponent this uh, match. Yeah, you know, uh, the number one seed stands in your way with a 427 roll-off score. His name is John Dufield. Have you bowled against him? No, this is the first time I met him, but he seems like a really good bowler. All right. Well, I'll see everyone next week, and we'll see uh, who's going to be the new king of the palace.